It began as a simple dream, one doctor with a passion for helping Oklahomans look and feel their very best. Today, Dr. Victoria Johnson is celebrating 21 years as one of the nation's most experienced laser and cosmetic specialists. Visit laserlightsc.com to learn more. Welcome to the 2023 FFB Awards Highlights. And First Fidelity Bank is on a tear right now. You know, when FFB hits the field, they always play to win. Thank you to these sponsors for supporting Conversations with Coach. First Fidelity Bank, Laser Light Skin Clinic, Rose Hill Builders, Oklahoma Ford Dealers, 988, Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline. Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with my friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share stories. Today, I'm joined by the one and only Baker Mayfield. Baker, I appreciate you spending some time with me, and uh, you're awful kind on one of your days off to uh, give me a little bit of time. Wouldn't have missed it, Coach. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, let me first, let me give a rundown. Heisman Trophy winner, 2017. Finalist also in 16. Maxwell Award winner. Davey O'Brien Award winner. Associated Press Player of the Year, all in 2017. Uh, Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, 2015 and 17. Uh, offensive Freshman of the Year in 13. That was when you were at Tech. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Two-time First Team All-American, 2015-17. Three-time First Team All-Big 12. So uh, first pick in the draft. And um, anyway, uh, first pick in the draft for the Browns. Offensive Player of the Week, uh, Let's see here. Uh, uh, week 16 and week seven. How many times you were the uh, rookie of the week? Seven times. <laughs> anyway, that goes on and on. Everybody knows about the special player you are, Baker. And uh, I had the, the pleasure of coaching you and uh, the joy of being around you every day. So let's, let's go back there. You walk on at, first of all, Texas Tech. Yep, and and then um, you're not happy about what's happening there. And talk about your journey to OU and maybe your ties to Oklahoma as a young person. Yeah, um, I mean, so I was a baseball player growing up, and I always loved baseball. First time I picked up a football, though, I fell in love with it. And my dad knew a lot of the coaches back on the Switzer staff. Obviously, a lot of a lot of our mutual friends. That there's the connection there. But so Mike growing Jones, up, love one oh, of yeah, them. Mike Jones, of course, <laughs> yes. Uh, and so the first time I picked the football up, I loved it. And then the connections there allowed us to come up and come to a bunch of home home games. Got to watch the the era of Jason White uh, and starting there and continued on. So, I, I mean, I, I fell in love with OU football growing up in the heart of Austin, Texas. So not, not exactly uh, right. what was ideal or the uh, what people would think would happen. But I, I just fell in love with it. Fell in love with driving up to Norman uh, maybe for a game or two a year and, and just watching the Sooners play as you were coaching. And um, it, it, that was where my heart was the whole time, you know, and, and financially at the time walking on to Texas Tech when I didn't have the scholarship offers was, uh, was the best uh, decision for our family. And um, yeah, it didn't work out there at Texas Tech. I'm a firm believer everything happens for a reason. But because I had applied to Oklahoma right out of uh, high school and, and been accepted, that, that made the transition when I left in December of 2013 to be able to enroll um, in just normal classes in 2014. Because as you know, uh, the, the transfer was blocked. So I was just living in the normal dorms until I got that letter from the NCAA and Showed up to dinner and introduced myself to you, and uh, yeah, we started then. Let's talk about that. Now, you're you're on campus. I don't even know you're there. <laughs> Wasn't it true? Weren't you playing uh, flag football as well? Flag football. Uh, I'm guessing you're team softball. one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did win. Um, well, I got, I, got, I got banned from flag football, but um, <laughs> we won the intramural softball championship with the guys that lived on my dorm floor. Uh, it, it was a great group, but yeah, it was – just working out at the rec the until I got that letter and it was 
I was just a normal student living life and, until I got the chance to come play for you. Now you come over to see me. You you show up at our first team meeting, if, how, if I remember it right. Yep. And uh, we've got the whole team there. You know, everyone's back for the second semester. We're going to start our winter workouts and, you know, get ready for spring ball. And and I kept hearing through through the break, I said, Baker Mayfield's transferring to Oklahoma. I kept hearing this. But I said, but I asked the coaches, Kale Gundy and, you know, Coach Heupel, whoever. I got anybody heard anything? I said, no, no, no. And everyone's like, no, we hadn't heard anything. So you hadn't contacted us. But no. I said, well, I said, maybe he'll show up, you know. And, and anyway, <laughs> we have our first meeting. And right before dinner, the guys are sitting around, are going to have dinner after our meeting. And you walk up to me and say, Coach, I'm Baker Mayfield. Um, <laughs> I'm like, look at you. I'm like, you sure, sure as hell are, aren't you? And uh, you go, I want to I wanna play here at Oklahoma. And I don't know. I, I can remember just saying, look, because I knew who you were. I saw you yeah. win those games as a true freshman at Tech. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm damn glad you're here. And you're going to have every opportunity, you know, to be our quarterback like everybody else. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. And, it you. was uh, the, so the process for me is, you know, when I took the chance of transferring um, and the NCAA sent a bunch of stuff about can't contact the coach, can't do all that. So we were really, really following the rules. Obviously, the transfer transfer world is very different now. Yeah, you think. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I was just trying to follow the rules so I didn't get in more trouble um, and, and get, you know, possible suspension or whatever. But so, yeah, just enrolled in classes, finally got that opportunity and I remember you looking at me kind of crazy and and saying you know we just have a redshirt freshman just won Sugar Bowl MVP I'm like, yeah I, I know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you were I love Trevor but he was he was one of the first people to welcome me in with open arms and that that just speaks to the program and the culture that you had built there yeah man a great person Trevor is you're right yeah. he's an awesome guy and yeah he's still as you know welcome in open arms around here and I uh, yep. love him yep. well we got OU Texas this week Baker I know you were you were two and one uh, mm-hmm. against them, uh, fifteen your first year playing and Coach Riley's first year at on my staff. Yep, we struggled a little bit, struggled running the football. Yep, but a lot better memories the next couple of years in uh, sixteen and seventeen. Talk about some of your feelings on the the rivalry. Yeah, I, the first year, I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. We struggled offensively, and that was you know the first year in his system, new system. We we were. We weren't nearly as good early on in the year as we did, you know, peaking towards the final when we made the mm-hmm. playoffs. But it, it was, you know, it was all the fundamentals and stuff kind of went out the window when it came down to the OU Texas game. All the stuff that we really worked on with the new system, um, it just became kind of a just a physical matchup trying to win the game. We obviously came up short. We lo- lost that one just by a one score game. And so, um, and going into that next year was, since I had lost the year of eligibility transferring, I thought it was going to be my last time to play Texas, but you know, full circle, I got the year back, whatever. But um, it was like, I, I have to win this game, you know, growing up an OU fan, it, it means everything. And there's no better atmosphere to that. And so 2016, I just remember how good we really played on offense and we were rolling. I mean, DD Westbrook had an unbelievable game. Um, it, it just, the memories for that game, it was a, it was a shootout. So we had so much fun on that one. And then senior year, it was, you know, uh, as your OU resume, you, you have to walk out with a win. You have to have that golden hat on as a senior. And, and that was so important for me. And it was, it was another close one. Um, it, it was, it was the closest game I had had in, uh, in the three matchups and just to be able to have those memories. Um, I still remember, you know, not feeling too great on the sideline. I got banged up a little bit in the shoulder and, and Lincoln's asked me what play I want. And I remember uh, it, it was called Celtic. It was a little post route by the outside receiver and a corner and up by Mark. And yep. it was, it was the seal the deal play for us. And uh, yeah, it's got the, it's got the famous uh, commentator call Mark Andrews up, <laughs> up the sideline. Yeah. So it was, uh, that's one of those plays that I'll never forget. And just the excitement and uh, uh, be able to hold on to that memory and cherish it forever. Yeah, that play sealed the deal. It's kind of a instead of the wheel route going out and up the the boundary, went up inside and yeah. out and up the boundary, and it really fooled them. And then sixteen, we we had like six hundred and seventy yards of offense. It was unbelievable. I yeah, Samaje rushed for over two hundred yards. Exactly. 
Samaj and, uh, and Joe, I mean, it was, yeah. yeah D.D. We, Westbrook had over, uh, I think, around 200 yards receiving. So we had a lot of big plays, definitely. There, there wasn't a bad play that could have been called that game for us. It was one of those days. Yeah, no doubt. All right, now we're going to fast forward. Here you go, Baker. First uh, pick in the draft there a uh, few years ago. You've had quite the journey. I'm, I grew up near Cleveland in Ohio in Youngstown, oh, yeah. and, and I'm not gonna, we're not going to get on anybody. But the bottom line, how many coaches did you go through, head coaches and coordinators oh, in your years? It's hard. You can't even count them in the three, <laughs> four years you were at the um, Browns. Two head coaches, two coordinators the first year. The first year. The first year, yeah. Year three was Freddie, different OC again, so three and three. And then, uh, yeah, so I had, I had four head coaches and four different offensive coordinators in four years there. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's challenging. But fast forward now, I loved what you did with the Rams. Talk about just your short period of time with, with them, and I thought yeah. it was really positive for you. Yeah, so uh, just to, to come full circle on it, you know, the the season leading up or the off season leading up to that was when Browns picked up the Sean and um, I knew that the writing was on the wall, the end in Cleveland. So I wanted to get out and the opportunity came to where I, you know, had to, you know, make a little sacrifice to go to Carolina. Um, but that wasn't all it was chalked up to be. But then, uh, like I said earlier, everything happens for a reason. It gave me opportunity to late in the year, have a five game little stretch with, with the Rams right. and, and they weren't, they weren't in a great spot either. They were out of the playoffs. Um, it, it was, you know, when we first met, when I got there to LA, it was like, all right, this is going to be a five game season for you, five game season for us. Let's make the most of it. And I'm so thankful for those guys out there. Um, you know, starting with Sean McVay, I mean, he, he's a great guy and just the opportunity that gave me was, it's the whole reason I'm here in Tampa because they I, run a similar system and that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. See, I, I don't know, Sean, but I sure respect the hell out of watching them coach and, how bright and smart and how well their teams play. So yeah. uh, it looked like you were a great fit for them. And now, and then from there now, Tampa, talk about how, it, if the systems are similar, why they are and how that's going for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it, it's a lot of motions in different play action sets that um, they want to present different looks for a defense and, and trying to get their eyes fixated on certain things and, and you know get them get them unbalanced but it was it was great to get to learn it from a guy that's, that knows it extremely well and then now my offensive coordinator Dave Canales um he he's running the same system based on somebody that worked with McVeigh that was in Seattle with him so he Dave was in Seattle for 13 years coached pretty much every position besides O-line uh, tremendous guy and you know it I look back on it now and it's so Todd Bowles is a defensive guy um, and, and Dave, he lets Dave do everything offensive, offensively. So it, it reminds me a lot of when I got to OU, you hired Lincoln right. and you're doing all the defensive stuff and trusting Lincoln to handle the offense. And it's very similar to that. It's like, you know, you have your responsibilities. You got to be accountable for that. Everybody do your job and good things will happen. And so it, it's a, it's a great layout and it feels like home to me for sure. Good. Um, I, I, I have, I have the worst luck in the world of any head coach of trying to call plays offensive plays so I learned way back early in my coaching career whatever I say don't listen just <laughs> do what you're supposed to do but um I just finishing up Baker talk, talk about uh, your team and what the future looks like here and then give a message out to the uh to the Sooners here before yeah. we go yes yeah, so we're uh, we're heading into a bye week um right now sitting at three and one which is uh what we expected uh, but not what everybody else was. And as you know, uh, right. when, when they count us out, that, that's when we do our best. That's when I do my best. And so we're, we have a great group, a lot of veterans and some young key pieces that are learning from the guys that have played a lot of ball. And it's, it's just a, it's a positive atmosphere that it doesn't have a lot of BS, extra drama that normal NFL organizations do. And so um, it, it, it's, it's a great group. I'm having so much fun doing it. And uh, like I said, it makes me feel like home, like I'm back at Oklahoma. And so, uh, no better time than to have a bye week coming on this weekend, get to go back to the OU Texas game. And uh, I'm, I'm just proud of how they're playing. You know, obviously last year was a, was a rough year transition wise, but um, I think they took all that personal. Uh, everybody's saying right. that oh, they're not the same Oklahoma, uh, but BV has got them rolling. I think the offense is going to, is capable of scoring points on anybody as they've shown. So uh, we're, 
Uh, I'm ecstatic from from all the way in Florida, but just to be able to get, see it up close and personal and, and be back home with all the fans is going to be awesome. Well, all the all the OU fans are going to be looking for a Baker sighting, so uh, <laughs> give them what they want, Baker. So appreciate you giving me the time, buddy. You're, uh, you're the best, and uh, Boomer Sooner, and uh, go Bucks, Boomer, appreciate you, Coach. All right, my man. That wraps up this installment of Conversations with Coach. Follow and subscribe to this channel and visit selloutcrowd.com to find out about upcoming programs.